I'm here with Julie Crochetier at the Rose Theater before her performance. And welcome, Julie. <laughs> Thank you very much. So my first question is actually, um, you, were, you were a member of Sugar Jones, right? Yes, I was. Yeah, and you were, were you actually living the dream at that point because you had hit singles, you, you had a platinum record, you were opening for Destiny's Child. There were a lot of things going on you know, with Sugar yeah. Jones that probably just, you know, catapulted you <laughs> into the industry. Yeah, it was definitely a really intense experience. Yeah. It was definitely something that's very sort of outside of the common for at the time. At the time, it was the first reality TV show. Yeah. So it, it was very, very unique experience. Mm -hmm. um, it was very much kind of like a dream because uh, I, I was uprooted from home. Uh, I'm from Montreal. Yeah. So I came to Toronto and um, started w working with uh, in just a completely different kind of setting. So mm -hmm. it was fun. Um, my dream is to uh, make music. My dream is to write music. My dream is to become a better version of myself as an artist. So mm -hmm. I was living the dream and I'm still living the dream because I feel like I'm continually progressing yeah. towards towards bigger and better things, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's great. Now, um, you actually played the trumpet, right? Yeah, I did. Sugar Jones, yeah. Wow. CD. Yeah. I did, <laughs> I did. I played trumpet in the, my high school concert band. That's kind of where it started. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you play the piano, keyboards, right? Yeah. And are there any other instruments that you play? Well, I dabble at the guitar, but only for writing. I haven't actually stepped on the stage and played yet. Yeah. I'd love. I, I really want to get there, but I. It's mainly an instrument that I use for, for writing songs and just stepping in another element. Mm -hmm. Now, do you actually keep in touch with any of the, the cast or the people that were on Trigger Jones? Or? You know, we've, uh, <clears throat> we have lots of um, common friends. Yeah. So we do run into each other every now and then, and yeah. I hear they're doing well, and I wish them well as well. Good. Good. Yeah. Um, now tell me about um, your first extended play was Cafe, right? Yeah. Yeah. So tell me a bit about the vision behind that, and you know what you were thinking of when you were writing the songs and. Well, you know, I decided to do Cafe, uh, I think it was in 2003, so it was shortly after the Sugar Jones experience. Yeah. Sugar Jones experience being very much of, a, of an experience where you, uh, you're dealing with very large companies and uh, just a lot of people working on that project. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to now step back from that experience and build it myself. See, yeah. now I had felt like I had gone through that whole thing and said, okay, well, now I want to start, start it from scratch. I want to, you know, write it, produce it, mm -hmm. oversee the recording, oversee everything. So it was very much of um, uh, kind of like my baby cafe. It was the first one. It was my first experience at, at putting everything together, every aspect. The entire thing was up to me as opposed to up to the group that mm -hmm. oversees the whole project. So it was almost the complete opposite of yeah. what I had experienced in the previous years, which I loved. Mm -hmm. And um, and from there, I continued writing, and then I released A, a Better Place in 2007. Yeah. yeah. And tell me about the vision behind that, and what kind of uh, track uh, you were on, and mind space you were on developing uh, that. So well, a uh, better place is very much a, it was a lot of soul searching. It was a lot of um, overcoming a lot of things in my life at, at the time. And um, all the songs are, have very special meaning. They're very personal. They're very much about my life and about what I've done. And even the covers that we selected are, mm -hmm. are covers that, you know, things I've listened to all my life that we really handpicked yeah. for it to really be a reflection of me. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I really wanted at the time to make an album that was going to be live, yeah. to have musicians, to have uh, string great. players <laughs> and horn players, and really that, that exchange that happens when you play with musicians, um, which when I look at all the records that I love, that's how yeah. they were made. Musicians all in a room playing, mm -hmm. 
and recording that particular version of that particular song, which is what A Better Place is. It's mm -hmm. a moment in time. That's what the song sounded like that day. Mm -hmm. All Everything was recorded all together in, in the room. So, yeah, yeah. I, you know, with a few exceptions, yeah. but, you know, no, uh, overall, great. so. I like it when that's artists cool. do that. I like that. It's very I think it's really important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you've actually been influenced by a lot of 70s musical artists. Yeah. Right? Those, that's yeah. kind of your, your yeah. time period. <laughs> One of my favorites is, uh, I, you know, I, I, I wish I was there in the 70s. <laughs> you know, just today, actually, my uh, keyboard player, Rob, uh, he brought his Leslie speaker you know, the V3, yeah. and in those days, they would they would lug that stuff around, like it's like lugging a piece of furniture, lugging your yeah. a piece of your house out onto to the gig, you know, they, and they had grand pianos and all the bars I hear, and it just seemed like a period of time where art and music was very prolific and very much present in, in the everyday life. Yeah. And, and today, I, I, it made me smile, and I feel happy to be able to have you know, Rob, come on the uh, come today at the show with his Leslie speaker. It's yeah. <laughs> uh, it's something you don't really see anymore. So, if you <clears throat> could choose one artist from that time period, oh. living or dead, <laughs> living or dead, who do you wish you could have made an album with? Donny or, Hathaway. Yeah. Why? I think I don't I don't know if I could sing through a whole song with him. I think I'd just break down and cry in the middle of it. Yeah. I listen to a lot of the um, duet albums he's made with Roberta Flack, and I, um, as a musician and as a as a vocalist, he's just so. He breaks my heart every time I listen to the songs. I, yeah. he really breaks my heart. I, uh, it's it's a voice that's so rich and so powerful, but so can be so subtle and intimate and yet so powerful when you hear him sing big mm -hmm. songs with the band and mm -hmm. it's to me he's he's almost I would go as far as saying he's got a perfect voice just a perfect yeah. soul and he was really able to put his soul into his songs yeah live them you know yeah yeah now do you have a favorite album I love his live stuff yeah. I, I I do enjoy his live stuff the, I think my favorite one would be um would be uh, see that's the thing is now we have <laughs> iPods and we yeah. can shuffle all the songs and I don't remember the name of the record <laughs> but it's a duet record with Roberta Flack and yeah. the so first song on the record is I who have nothing yeah and I think I love that particular record because of the experience I had when I was when I first listened to it mm -hmm. I was in Montreal I was back in my hometown and I was driving down the highway. A friend of mine told me, oh, you got to pick up that record. Yeah. Tony Albino, the co-producer yeah. of my album. Right. And um, it was raining. I was down the highway. I guess it was close to Christmas, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And I put the record on, and it just starts. I, I who have nothing. It was just, oh, <laughs> completely floored me from the first note to the end. I love it. 